Okay, so we're going to start this video by exploring something I mentioned in the previous one. So the idea of Galilean relativity. So essentially, this idea boils down to the fact that observers should agree on how long things take, so times, and they should agree on distances, even if the observers are moving at different speeds. Okay. So that's kind of Galilean relativity. We might call this intuitive relativity because this is kind of how we expect the world to work. And this is why this topic of special relativity confuses people so much. So we're going to start by considering the idea of someone throwing a ball up and down in a car and describe what a stationary observer and observer in a car will see. So what we're doing here is we're carrying out a thought experiment. We're not actually going to do this. We're just going to think about the consequences of what's going to happen. So we've got a person who's stationary and a person inside a car. And that car you can see is moving. And so we've got observer two who's inside the car or as we might describe this inside the reference frame of the person throwing the ball. We, what we're going to do is describe the paths the different observers will see the ball take. So observer one is stationary. So they'll see the ball follow this parabolic trajectory because it's got the up and down motion of the ball and also the horizontal motion of the car. So they'll see it do something like this. Person two isn't going to notice the motion of the car because they're in the car. So they're just going to see the ball go up and down. Now, both of these observers, if they had a stopwatch on them, would measure exactly the same flight time. So uh, because all of the velocities here are really small, so they'll measure pretty much an identical flight time. But observer two, if they don't take into account their own motion, would, would measure that the ball has traveled a different distance and therefore has had a different speed because they're only aware of the up and down motion, so they see it traveling a shorter distance, and so they'll think it's traveled at the same speed, at least initially. They would, th they would then be able to calculate how far it's actually gone and how fa fast it's actually traveled, but they, they would initially see different distances and different speeds. So given that the times are the same, the person who measures the shorter distance is going to see a smaller speed well the person who sees it travel the longest distance is going to measure a larger speed here um, although as i say they will be able to figure out uh, what each other saw <laughs> so the galilean relativity is based on two key ideas is this idea of absolute time so all observers should agree how long something took or they should agree on the rate at which time passes regardless of their motion okay and actually let's underline this one because the idea of motion and relative motion is really important for this special relativity they also have this idea of absolute distances so all observers will measure same distance once they've taken into account their own motion again regardless of their motion so how fast you are should not affect how long a distance is you may just need to do some calculations to actually figure it out so in this previous example, although initially observer two sees it travel a smaller distance and therefore a smaller speed, once they take into account their, the speed that they're traveling at, both observers will agree how far the ball has traveled and how fast it traveled, just, you know, despite what they initially see. So this is Galilean relativity. They, they agree on times, they agree on distances, therefore they also agree on speed because of that. I also, before I introduce special relativity, want to talk about simultaneity or whether things are simultaneous or not. So intuitively, we might think that if something is simultaneous for us, that it should be simultaneous for everyone else because we think everyone should agree on time. Um, but actually, that's not necessarily the case. So let's imagining, imagine a person standing on a platform, again, another thought experiment, and lightning strikes on either side of them, equidistant from the observer. And we'll imagine there's a second observer on a train who's going past that platform. So actually, what an observer doing is doing does affect whether events are simultaneous, because person one is going to see the two lightning strikes at the same time because they're equidistant from them. So to them, 
things occur at the same time. The observer on the train, however, is going to see the one on the right first because it's only got to travel this distance, whereas this one on the left has to travel a longer distance, so it will take longer to get there. So they'd see the one on the right first and then the one on the left. So even without special relativity, simultaneity is not really an intrinsic property or anything like that. So um, depending on what you are doing as an observer, you can see things as simultaneous and not simultaneous. Okay, so that's just an idea to introduce here. But the thrust of what we're looking at here move on to look at special relativity or Einstein's way of viewing all of these things that we looked at so far. So there's a nice video on this uh, which I've had a look at and I think does a nice job explaining this and uh, so do check that out I think it's really useful. Uh, but let's dig into some of the fundamental special relativity. So Galilean relativity says we've got absolute time and distance and then from that we're going to get everyone's going to agree on the speed. Special relativity says none of that. Special relativity, special relativity is talking about an absolute speed of light. So to expand on special relativity, re, special, I'm really struggling to say this, so special relativity. Um, first of all, special relativity has what we call some postulates, things that are assumed to be true. And then we carry out thought experiments to see what that would imply about that scenario. So it assumes that the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. So I'm going to dig into these two words here at the end, inertial and reference frames. Um, but the idea that the laws of physics are the same hopefully is not too uh, scary because um, we don't really have any basis to work or make do thought experiments if we think the laws don't apply somewhere else. So inertial just means constant velocity or non-accelerating. So as an observer, you need to be stationary or traveling at constant speed. So that's what we mean by a re reference frame. We're just essentially describing how fast an observer is traveling and or how fast an object is traveling. Those are the kind of the reference frame. And if you're traveling at the same speed as something else, you're described as being in the same reference frame. OK, so laws of physics are the same in all non-accelerating reference frames. And the second postulate is that in any inertial reference frame, the speed of light in a vacuum is a constant regardless of the motion of the reference frame. And that speed is three times 10 to the eight. And this one, once we dig into it, is very counterintuitive. And this is what really messes people up about special relativity because it doesn't work the way we think it should. Let's do a couple of thought experiments to explore the implication of special relativity. So what we're going to do is consider a person on a train shining a torch upwards and reflecting it back to them with a mirror. So um, on the top up here, there is a mirror there. And we're going to observe that. Both the person on the train is one of our observers and a stationary person maybe they're on a platform or whatever, watching the train is going to describe what they see. So what we're going to do is consider the different paths the observers see the light take. OK, so observer one will see it take this diagonal path we can see down here on the bottom left. Now, you might be wondering why it doesn't follow a parabolic path like the ball we might imagine being thrown upwards and that's because light isn't going to be affected by gravity so we're not it's not going to be slowed down as it goes upwards so we see this diagonal path instead observer two who is on the train only sees light travel up and down they don't see any horizontal motion in the light so our founding principle of special relativity is that they both must agree on the speed of light. It must be the same regardless of the observer motion. So what that means is because observer one saw light travel a longer path and the length of the path that they see is different is essentially this horizontal one. So we've lengthened the path by essentially this amount at the bottom. So because they see a longer distance, they must also see that event take a longer time. So to observer one, 
the light going up to the top and back down takes longer than for Observer 2, light going up and down, which is quite bizarre because we would expect, surely they should agree how long it takes to go up and down. But actually, special relativity says, no, the observer that's not in the reference frame of the light will see it take longer. OK, so hopefully that's blown your mind a little bit because that's pretty crazy. So this allows us to see, um, well, we just saw one of the two key general rules of relativity, and I'll introduce the second one, and then we'll go back to the example to see uh, where these fit in. So observers that are outside of the reference frame of an event will measure it to take longer, a longer time than someone inside the reference frame. And the second thing is that observers see distances outside their reference frame parallel to their velocity as shorter. So let's see those two in action with this particular uh, or thought experiment. So you can see here that we said observer one, who is outside the reference frame of the event. So the event here is the torch being going up, hitting the mirror and coming back down again. That's the event here. So observer one is outside that reference frame. So they will measure it to take a longer time than the person inside. So if they both had a stopwatch, person two stopwatch would have a smaller reading for the time than observer one is. Obviously they can't measure the time uh, of light, um, but this is why it's a thought experiment, not a real one. So, so, and then the second one says observers see distances outside their reference frame parallel to their velocity as shorter. So we can see that on these diagrams here. So here is the distance that we're referencing. So the distance that's key is the one parallel to the mo observe the observer motion. So um, this observer in the train is traveling to the right. So the distance parallel to that is this horizontal distance. So the person who's moving, which is observer two, sees this distance here as shorter than the person outside their reference frame does, which you can see it appears much longer. So special relativity essentially says observers will agree on speed, but they'll both measure different times and they'll measure different distances depending on what they as the observer are doing. And that's it the introduction that I want to give to special relativity, we'll move on to look at length contraction and time dilation in more equation form in the next video.